Hey everyone, hope you're having a great Gatsby camp thus far. My name is Avi Iyer, and I'm a principal software engineer here at Gatsby. Today, my talk is to Gatsby 4 and beyond. Let's get started. Developer tools today are becoming increasingly cloud native. But what is cloud native? Cloud native is a set of tools and practices that allow teams to build, deploy, and operate software applications more frequently, predictably, and reliably. They leverage a network of cloud resources that help you accomplish tasks you normally would do on a single machine or locally. If you don't believe me, a prime example of a cloud-native application is GitHub Codespaces. Codespaces is a cloud-native environment that GitHub is now using for their engineering teams. It makes a lot of sense. GitHub is a huge distributed system. They have tons of different programming languages and tons of services going on. With Codespaces, engineers get a cloud version of VS Code, environments with different machine sizes, and a standardized dev environment. We're thinking a lot about this experience here at Gatsby, but for us to get to this utopia, we have to take some steps. For Gatsby to scale to the largest sites in the world and the largest teams, we need to deconstruct the monolith. Gatsby today is a set of tasks that run in a single process, but it doesn't have to be that way. With Gatsby, it's all about the data. It starts with the data, but we first need to understand where we were before today. Before today, Gatsby stores data from the various plugins that you use in an in-memory data store backed by Redux. You also have a single CPU to query the data store, which limits the amount of data you can retrieve concurrently. Essentially, you're only as fast as your slowest request. Being in memory, the data store has its limitations. For example, if your machine has eight gigabytes of RAM and your data exceeds that, you're gonna run into some serious problems. Many of our larger sites run into high memory usage scenarios all the time. To achieve subsequent warm builds, the store requires persistence, which will be impossible if your data set is larger than the available in memory. Not to throw salt on a wound here, but when Gatsby uh, saves your store to disk, Node needs to make a copy of it to serialize it. So it actually needs way more memory to do persistence. Gatsby 4 ships with Gatsby DB, a new data store to leverage Gatsby Cloud to scale static and unlock the future. But what is Gatsby DB? Gatsby DB is a re-implementation of Gatsby's node store. It uses LMDB, which is Lightning Memory Mapped Database Manager. We also leverage LMDB store, which is a great node module uh, maintained by Dr. Evidence on GitHub. Shout out to Dr. Evidence for great maintenance on that project. Gatsby DB ships by default in Gatsby 4. You don't have to make any changes to take advantage of it. The benefits of Gatsby DB are faster cached persistence, reduction in peak memory utilization. It allows both local and remote machines to fully utilize all CPU cores, and the data sets can be larger than available RAM. Essentially, this is the opposite of the problem that we had before. By storing the Gatsby data layer in LMDB, we can also restore the data in a worker, a container, a serverless function. Essentially, what I'm getting at is you can query the data layer outside of a Gatsby process. In this diagram, the main Gatsby process shares information with the Gatsby DB. We can then have workers reading and writing to this data store to accomplish tasks the Gatsby build process needs to complete. If you need more juice, add another worker. Let's go about this a little deeper. Today, Gatsby is a single process with many tasks, but in the future, Gatsby will be, will be an orchestrator managing a pool of tasks specific to workers that can parallelize work. This will allow us to scale horizontally. By leveraging the Gatsby DB, we are setting ourselves up for a future of reduced build times across the stack. At our last Gatsby camp, Dustin Shao presented this graph on how Gatsby is shifting left from the purely static world to somewhere in between. With Gatsby 4, I can confidently say we are shifting further left. We're evolving with the needs of the teams building Gatsby sites. Some teams may need to tap into the purely dynamic with SSR, and other teams may want to generate their site at build time. 
We're solving the problems on both fronts today with Gatsby 4, so you can confidently choose the techniques you need to build your web. Let's talk about the available rendering strategies in Gatsby 4. SSG, SSR, DSG. I know these are a ton of acronyms, and we'll get into them now. Ultimately, when it comes to these rendering strategies, the choice is yours. Static Site Generation, or SSG, is how Gatsby works today. Users want to build their site at build time. They don't mind the extra time the build process takes to generate these files, and at the right scale, maybe 100,000 pages, this is the best UX available. But pages don't directly match scale. It really is about how much data you need to create the page, or really, how much time are you willing to wait? Some people may be fine with this time, but an e-commerce site, for example, does not have that luxury. With static site generation, Gatsby Cloud builds and hosts your files in our cloud storage. When a request comes into our hosting layer, we can tell the Gatsby worker to pull it from a, fi a file cache and return a CDN response. On a second request, this file is cached at the CDN layer and your file is returned quickly. This is how Gatsby works today. Next is server-side rendering, SSR. Server rendering generates the full HTML for a page on the server. This is predominantly focused for data fetching outside the Gatsby data layer, maybe a third-party API, something that's time-based, or maybe A-B testing. We have a new export in Gatsby 4 called Get Server Data, and this is used to access third-party data. In server rendering, a request comes through to Gatsby hosting, and it's a cache miss. Our hosting route then sends this request to a Gatsby Cloud worker, which will run the get server data function exported with your page component and return HTML back to the user. By default, SSR pages do not get cached in Gatsby hosting, but you can set cache headers for pages if you want to serve this page from the CDN for a short time period. Deferred static generation, or DSG, is when a user has a very large site and doesn't want to build all the pages up front. For a content-heavy site, why build pages at build time for pages with little to no traffic? For example, in GatsbyJS.com, we have a huge archive of content. And in these pieces of content and our page components, we're relying on other components, like a nav bar, similar articles, a sidebar. Anytime these dependencies change, we have to build every page that depends on them. If a page doesn't, has little to no traffic, for example, like a blog post from 2015, why are we spending that, that time building it at build time? We're confident with DSG, this eliminates the jam tax in a user-friendly way. In DSG, the first request is a cache miss because Gatsby Cloud didn't generate this page at build time. The request is sent to the Gatsby worker, which will leverage the Gatsby DB to run any page queries needed to fulfill the data of the page. Once the page is generated, it will be sent back to the user immediately. In the background, we will store all generated artifacts in our cloud storage, just like a normal SSG page. On a second request, because Gatsby Cloud has this page generated, it will bypass the Gatsby worker and serve the page from our cache. And if the page has been cached in a CDN pop relative to the user, they'll get a direct CDN response. Okay, let's do a little demo. This is the Gatsby Starter blog, and for each blog post, I'm going to enable DSG by adding the defer attribute to the create page API call. With defer, Gatsby will not generate an HTML or page data JSON file, but will wait for this to be requested and built on demand. In Gatsby Cloud, we store information about your routes in Google Spanner. Here we can see that each of the blog post HTML files and their page data JSON files are marked DSG without a SHA-256. The SHA-256 is important because in Gatsby Cloud, we use these SHAs to query files in our file cache. If a SHA is present, that means there's a file that's backed in our file cache. Let's load up the site and open up the network tab. And I'll do a quick refresh here. And in the background, we'll see that Gatsby has begun prefetching all the page data JSON files for client-side rendering. 
Let's take a look at the first blog post here and we should get a client side render. Awesome. I'm gonna pull up the logs of the Gatsby worker and I'm gonna hit refresh to see that it's gonna generate our page. So I'll hit refresh and you can see that the, the worker is essentially generating that page on demand. If I go back into Google Spanner and rerun this query, I should see that this page has its SHA-256. So we can see that the page data that we uh, prefetched all have their files generated, as well as new beginnings, which is the blog post I just loaded. If I go back and clear my terminal here, and I go back to our site, and I do a refresh, I should not receive any action in the Gatsby worker. And this is because that file has already been generated and does not need to be generated again. These rendering strategies required us to introduce new architecture and infrastructure to the Gatsby Cloud platform. Building upon this, we can do more interesting cases. Oftentimes we get asked for authenticated pages or personalized content. Here's a future looking example of how we could implement a pre-route middleware that authenticates the user prior to showing them the page. A request comes into the pre-route middleware. If the request does not have authentication credentials, potentially a cookie or a header, we will redirect the user to their auth provider. Could be Google, Okta, Auth0, you name it. Upon successful authentication, the request comes back into the pre-route middleware, and then the page will follow the appropriate rendering workflow to handle the response. All of this is possible because we saw a world where you can build and deploy your Gatsby sites with Gatsby Cloud. Thanks to our partners at Fastly and a whole lot of work from our engineering team, we're able to carve a path forward here. With all these components, I can confidently say that we are becoming the platform for building on the web. Gatsby open source with different rendering strategies, coupled with Gatsby Cloud for your build pipeline, and deployed with Gatsby hosting, I think we have a complete solution. We are proud of what we've demonstrated today. And we can't wait to see what you'll build for your web with Gatsby 4. There are likely a few bugs and some issues here and there, and we really need your help to discover and continue to improve. So please try out the next Gatsby version, and you can install that at Gatsby at Next, and we can't wait to see what you build. So like I said in the beginning, to Gatsby 4 and beyond! Thank you. I'm Avi Iyer. You can find me on Twitter at Avi Iyer. And uh, you can find me on GitHub as well. Have a great Gatsby game.